is not Sam Wrestling. Introducing your host from New York, here is Sam Roberts. So it wasn't too long ago, the last time I talked to Nick Aldis, uh, and you all heard that, but it's like a whole world has changed since then. It was months ago. We had quite a prophetic conversation, if I remember rightly. Very prophetic, and it's one of the first things that I I thought about when I heard the announcement uh, of what was going down at All In. The fact that we had had... Did you take credit for it? That conversation? I did. I said Cody was obviously listening. The right. Bucks were obviously listening. And they were like, I hadn't thought of that, but we have to... So Nick Aldis is back. So welcome back, Nick. Thank you. Um, did you know when we were talking then that this was at least a possibility? Yes. Or you did? I was just... I was funny. I was going to say... I. I because I remember when you said it, I remember going like, oh, damn. Like, I don't... Because <laughs> uh, it was very, very, like very very embryonic at that point and we were kind of like it's not close it's not far enough along where i want because I, I didn't want to be that wrestling guy that goes like yeah i'm gonna be it all in you know yeah. like and, like, and then i'm gonna get twitter yeah, talking like, and then yeah, they're yeah, gonna yeah. have yeah. no choice they're gonna but have to, no choice yeah. but to, right exactly <laughs> but right. did you so my own merit. so did you know or or did you have what it was the embryonic idea that you would be a part of the show or was the embryonic idea always that you'd bring the NWA championship to defend against Cody. I think that was the not 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 that not necessarily Cody, but certainly that the you know that we would defend the championship there. Yeah. Um and 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 to be fair to Cody and the Bucks, that had been, you know, the the I always look I look at all in and I completely understand why they called it all in because mm-hmm. it's a bunch of guys who bet on themselves and the NWA is a perfect example of that. What we decided to all, you know, we did together. I took a chance, you know, we, Dave took a chance, Billy took a chance. We all, we, we bet on ourselves to go, I think we can do something with this and make people interested in this. So it makes perfect sense that it would be represented there. You yeah. Know? And, and that, and that was about, and they, they felt the same way. And that was about as far as we got at that point. If they all, you know, they sort of agreed like, yeah, man, that would be the, that would be a good place to have it. So before this was happening, I feel like, I mean, obviously, and we talked about it last time. You guys were 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 doing the NWA thing. You mm-hmm. were going to the indie shows, right? You were you were doing the the uh, Ten Pounds of Gold series on YouTube. Yeah. But I still feel like when you talked about wrestling outside of the WWE, and you talked about the people that were the self starters and the people that were really making an impact, it was always about the Bucks. It was mm-hmm. always about the Bullet Club. It was always about Cody. Mm-hmm. It was about their YouTube and series. Marty. And yeah, of course, and Marty Scurll, the whole yeah, mm-hmm. the 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 gang of them. Um. And the the NWA wasn't really mentioned in the same conversation. I think it is way more now. Yeah. Um, was that a, a a frustrating period of time for you, or you and Dave and Billy, or whatever? Just saying, hey, we're we're doing this over here. No, what do you guys? Because, because where they were at that point is after years of work. I see. You know what I mean? It I wasn't mean, like, you know, let, let's I, when 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 did the when did the Bucks leave TNA? It was like. T- 2013 2012 no earlier than that 2012 yeah. i think yeah you know and and they they'd been working on this ever since you know that they, they, they believed in themselves and their ability to show everybody who they were and what they could do and they we're the young bucks you know we're not generation me you know we're not this other thing like we're the young bucks like and we're you know we're nick and matt and this is what we do and we're and you know they 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 stuck to it and it resonated with people people started to get behind it and now look where they are it's incredible what they've yeah. done Marty was the same way. Like, you know, Marty's had several non-starter gimmicks. You know mm-hmm. that he and they're, but they're all him. They're all him, like manifesting different parts of his personality until eventually he found the thing that worked. And as soon as that villain thing hit, like, we, you know, I, I've been, I've been with him every step of the way. You know, for, on the end of the phone, yeah, and being like, and I like, I'm, I'm not taking any credit whatsoever. But you than, just know the journey. Yeah, and I mean, he's one of my best friends. But I, you know, is also a guy who I said to TNA multiple times, sign this guy. Even if you don't like what he has today, he's going to come up with something that is going to blow the doors off. And I, I said that verbatim. Not that's not a, that's not an interpretation. So I said that's exactly what I said mm-hmm. to multiple people. Mm-hmm. I told him over the years to sign Neville. I told him to sign Fergal. I told him to sign a bunch <laughs> of guys. But that's that's another story for another day. But um, oh, what have any of those guys ever done? <laughs> yeah. But um, but Marty was one of those guys who you know several times they sort of flirted with the idea and when they kept going eh, we don't see it and I said yeah you, you don't see it because you don't see him for long enough but I'm telling you this guy it's there like mm-hmm. 
and, and you know, so and and. And I guess those, I mean, when he did do what little he did with TNA, like, you know, those matches or whatever, when you go back and you Google image that, it looks like a different guy. Yeah. Like, yeah. it looks like a completely different person. It's certainly not the villain. No, and, and the thing is, what's great is that it's almost, it's, a, it's, a, a, it's very similar to Broken Matt in the sense that he took all of these negative experiences and used them to create a mythology to th that then became that character, which is brilliant. Yes. Because... Uh, you know, the same way that I, I have to take ownership of Brutus Magnus. Do you know what I mean? With the with the helmet and the S and M gear and the bullshit. Like it's like I have to take ownership right. of it. Because like, I don't know, pretend it didn't happen. Like because then people are just gonna keep throwing it at you. But I go like, yeah, it was rotten. Yeah. It was awkward. No, Nick Aldis is a different yeah, person. Right, I don't right, know who right, this right, Brutus right. Magnus. That's not. That was my character. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> so you know, I think that people appreciate. Um, that's sort of the great thing about wrestling fans in the sense now that. The ones that that are here are here to stay, and mm -hmm. they appreciate the journey that you've been on, and, and in, a, in a lot of ways, it endears you to the audience in a different way when they understand that, like this guy's been through the ringer. You know, he's, he's he's had to sort of he's had to eat a few plates of crap here and there. Which is the same story as Cody, right? I mean, that people, it, sure. the fact that guys like you and Marty and Cody and the Bucks and all you guys are telling your stories honestly, in the yeah. sense that like you're part of who you are now. Right. Is what didn't work before. And yeah. what didn't work before is what has motivated all of you across sure. the board to be the characters, if you want to say mm -hmm. that, that you are right now. And, and I think and I think that the, the very compelling part of Cody and I is that the, there's so many parallels, even though it's a completely contrasting origins, but very parallel journeys in the sense that we both have this huge thing looming over us that that has nothing to do with it that, that, that has no bearing on on what our ability or what we bring to the table whatsoever his being that he's the son of dusty Rhodes, mine being that i'm married to someone you know what i mean mm -hmm. to someone who's who's successful and it's like both of the like hey no one was talking about that when i was the tna world champion and, and mickey was sitting at home right you know or when she was pregnant with our son, it's like no, that wasn't an issue. But now she's, you know, suddenly it's like you know, now, now right. every now and then I'll still get like the occasional troll. It'll be like, oh, Mister Mickey James gets another chance. Like, right. gets another chance at what? Like, <laughs> be be believe me, like it, it, it doesn't help. You know what I mean? It's it. If anything, it's probably the opposite, right? right. Like, it's not a help. Like, it's not like you know, a believe that that is not the way that you want. That would not be the way that I would want to go to WWE, for example, if that was everything. That that is not the way I would want to go in. Of course, like I mean, you just said a moment ago, you don't want to get to All In based on like starting a fake Twitter campaign. No, I mean, I, going you into WWE you, because your wife's there now, is like nowadays, like the days of like fake it till you make it are over. Right? right, you've got to be there on merit, and and you've got to create some interest in what you're doing and believe in what you're doing. And I, I, I just I was just doing busted open. We had this discussion where. The, the the boys are often the first barometer, you know, to see whether something is working or not. And when I had the you know guys in the dressing room who I've worked with, you know, for many years in TNA and multiple levels, come up to me and be like, "Man, there's just something different about the way you're doing stuff." And I like just I just love watching you, like not not necessarily in the ring or what, but just love the way that you're just you're going about this whole going about your business. Like Bubba even said that just now on the race. Like mm -hmm. I just really get a kick out of watching you go about your business from the minute you show up to the minute you leave because it's like a whole thing. And it's that starts in your in your mind. You know, you have to believe and 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 put out there who you are and who who your vision is for yourself. And I I don't want to get into a big you know sort of motivational speech here about it, but it is it's very very necessary. And um, you know, where this this whole thing, you know, some of it may seem like serendipity. And uh, you know, Cody and I have had this discussion privately, where it's like it may seem that way, but it's actually really not. You know, it's actually just his vision for himself, my vision for myself, Billy's vision for the NWA, Dave's vision for the NWA, Ring of Honor, you know, everyone's thinking it's all intersecting. And we all yeah. went, hey, we can all benefit from this. But it's also one of those things, and I think a lot of people miss this, that you look at somebody who's got success, who maybe, like, they look at you as, as Brutus Magnus, and then they look at you today, mm -hmm. and they go, oh, man, he got a, he got a lucky break. Right. He got, And they don't see that, like... The 10 years in between. Exactly. And, <laughs> and the entire decade... Yeah deliberate moves because you know I'm not doing anything that's going to make me an overnight you know whatever but I'm going to make these moves yep. slow steady deliberate so that once I get there there is this cemented foundation that like this is mine now yeah. nobody it's, can it's, take this it's interesting you say deliberate moves because 
that's actually that's very very true and i maybe hadn't even thought about that until you just said it mm -hmm. so it's it's interesting because i can look back at points in my career where i had tremendous opportunities to really solidify myself but i didn't make that deliberate move because i was too busy just reacting as opposed to being proactive right and that's the difference is that you know there there's certainly a time you know like i remember in in, in tna right before bound for glory i was just you know, there was stuff going on in my personal life that was kind of distract, very distracting, and I was just, I was just sort of all over the place, you know, mentally, um, and uh, it was, and it was spilling over into my professional conduct. It wasn't not to say that I was being like unbearable or anything, but it was, I was very reactionary. You know, I was probably twenty five, twenty six, and Christy Hemi said something about me on a podcast that just completely set me off the deep end. And I remember literally saying, like, if she doesn't apologize, like, I'm not going to be there. And I was thinking, what are you doing? <laughs> like, listen to what you're saying. Like, you're insane. Uh -huh. You know, but I was so angry about, like, because it was this thing of, like, I'm not getting support from the people, from the company. You know, like, I'm, right. I'm doing all this stuff and they're not, and, and like, like, they're like... You've now become that guy who's they're like, my legs out. I'm the one who's putting all these people no, in I didn't, the no, 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 and... to be, no, to be fair, it wasn't so much that. It was the fact that, like, you're supposed to be promoting me but the person who like represents this company is like trashing me right like how how is she how is there no repercussions for this right. you know what i mean and so i ended up having to sort of take it on myself to kind of call her out on it and it was it was all fine but i remember being like i remember you know, saying to bob Ryder like this you know, we need to fix this like right now otherwise like i'm not coming you know what i mean you're like, like, mm -hmm. no, you you're gonna go you'll, you'll be there <laughs> you know you'll it's be like, there. Relax. Like, now it's like like yeah like what are you doing you know yeah. but it, but and and so as opposed to now was that attitude like Christy Hemi the attitude that you had that was displayed after Christy Hemi tra trashed you or said whatever she said was the reason that she said whatever she said because that attitude was I there I don't know maybe probably yeah. it's you know I mean every every everyone's actions is an interpretation of everyone else's right like sure. so and and clearly you attract that negative energy if you keep if you keep you know broadcasting and putting it out so you know, I, I I take ownership of all of it because mm -hmm. of the, whatever happened, whether it's all your fault or partly your fault, is you attracted it to yourself, and, mm -hmm. and I don't do that anymore. And once I, like to your point, had that moment where I said, you know, start making deliberate moves here, and and you know, just keeping in the back of your mind, harnessing that vision you have for yourself of who you want to be, not not what I want right now. Who do you want to be? And just keep making those deliberate moves to get there. And that's why, that's where I am now. Because look, I wore the suits. And I did all that stuff before in TNA, and it was it was fine, but it didn't have the same cachet, right? Because I didn't because I because I was doing someone else's vision. Right now, it's mine, and I, it's it's who I want to be, and it's and I feel it and I believe it every single second. Yeah, it's full ownership and it's commitment. Mm -hmm. yeah. commitment, commitment is is, is, the key. is key. Yeah, absolutely. So when when this match gets announced, right, and it's it's the first match announced for All In, mm -hmm. you know, and it's clearly because All In is a show that it's Cody and the Bucks and Marty's show, but this is the headline match, hypothetically. Um, are there any nerves in you? Because that's obviously something people hypothesized about from the time the show was even a maybe, is what's going to be the big match? Okay, we already saw Kenny versus Cody at Ring of Honor. They're probably not going to do that again. Who are they going to get in? You know, you're the name that is filling this ticket that mm. is highly anticipated. Are yeah. you going... God, I hope that they think that this is as big a deal as I do. I thought that the set when it got announced, but then I saw the reaction to it and been totally satisfied with right. it. Right. You know what I mean? It right. wasn't that, yeah, there's always going to, like, it's a wrestling business. There's mm -hmm. never, you know, it's never going to be 100%, uh, you know, satisfaction rate. But the number of, like, troll comments, like, it's so minuscule compared to people just going, oh my God, like, I'm, yeah. I'm so hyped for this. Like, I can't wait, you know, because of the, it's because of the work we've done. And because we, again, using that word commitment, we committed to telling the story the way we wanted to tell it. And yeah. in going old school with this big fight approach of like, we're not going to, you know, I'm not going to do a run in and he's going to do a run in and we're going to, you know, and then I'm going to have a tag match. Like, you know, we're going to have a tag <laughs> match with the, where we're, you know, we're, or we're going to be on the same tag team and, you know, and all this, like, this is ridiculous stuff that makes no sense. Yeah. No, we're two alpha males. And it's like, I liken it to, like, it, JR will get a kick out of this. I'm doing his show next week, actually, but like, it's, it, it's like two gunslingers, mm -hmm. you know, in a Western. That's the right. way I looked at this approach is it's like that sort of who's going to blink, who's going to move first, who's going to flinch. Yeah. And it almost seemed like, uh, 
after it was announced, from the time it was announced and forward, because of the way, because I think when it was first announced, the story that people connected with immediately was about the NWA championship. Yes. And about the connection to Cody mm-hmm. and about what this show means and everything. But really quickly after that, I mean really quickly, people started to invest not just in Cody and the title, but in you and Cody. Yes. And I think that what you did through the way you carried yourself and through being that alpha male was if people didn't put you in that category, I think you gave people no choice but to see you. And it wasn't even through matches necessarily. It was just through the presentation of the whole thing. And that's what you have to do. Yeah. That's the business we're in. Yeah. You know, like that's the... And I, I dare say that's probably the part that's missing the most. Mm-hmm. And I think that's why that's why people have gravitated to this. Because let's face it, you put this on paper, it's people aren't, you know, it's not like people were clamoring to see this match at some point. It's not, it's not a dream match. Right. Yeah. People hate, didn't I know hate, they were. Yeah, I, yeah. I hate the whole dream match thing anyway. How so, come? Because the, what's next? Right. What, what, other than other than I'm going to see two guys do some in, incredible physical, you know, Unless the dream match is based on like the mythology of the characters and the and 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 the you know the characteristics and the stories of them you know intersecting at this event, if it's just about oh I want to see this wrestler do his wrestling moves on this guy and in his wrestling moves likewise, uh, it's almost it's like boring. once the entrances are done, okay now they're in the ring together. This is well he's gonna go for his finish and he's gonna counter it and then he's gonna kick out of his finish and right. he's gonna do his finish off the top and then he's gonna do his finish off the top and then and then, and then, and then right you know it's, it's, it's shoot your wad so <laughs> right right like oh, right. whatever seen it a million times. Mm-hmm. What I got into this business for, and what what drew me to this business, was the build, mm-hmm. you know. And we went, we've got to give them the build. Yeah, that's, that's what and there doing. is this idea too that it actually leaves fans caring who wins. Yes, meaning, and it's not predictable, right? Because on one end, as a fan, as a person that's been watching this whole thing build, I would sit there and go, like, well, clearly, the way that. The NWA business is done now. The fact that it's not a promotion, it's about building a star, and it's about the championship, and it's about this, makes me believe that if and when you were to lose that title, it would be a massive deal that the idea is that you will be champion for a very long time. You are the face Mm. of this brand at the moment. At the same time, Cody Show, Dusty Sun, NWA championship. People are salivating about the possibility of that moment. Right. But at the same time, I'm salivating at going like, what if? Yeah, how much, how wonderful would it be to have Cody have that wonderful babyface moment where everybody's cheering because Dusty's son wins yeah. the, but how wonderful would that heat right. be if he doesn't do it? Right. And both, I to me at this moment, as sure. I talk to you as a fan, I feel like both are equally possible, which is what makes the match enticing. And that's our job as promoters. Look, you know, I've the, my biggest frustration at any wrestling company is when the people on the administrative side of it tell the wrestlers, "You just worry about wrestling, and we'll worry about writing and promoting." It's like, no, I worry about promoting because it's my match. Right, I'm going to go out and take these bumps and mess my body up. I want people to give a shit. And you're supposed to be wrestling as your character, right? Yes. Like, like the way the, who you are but in the ring is who you are when the, you talk. This is, is, this, is a, this is a this is a professional wrestling business. So the guys who write the show aren't going out and taking the bumps. Right. They're not the ones who are going to have to pay the price down the line. I know that no matter what I do, no matter what I you know what steps I take and how proactive I can be as far as looking after myself physically, I'm going to pay the price for this. Right. You know, 250 pound guy falling down on my back a lot. It's not going to. It's not going to end well, you know. At some point or other, there's going to be repercussions for that. It has to mean something. Otherwise, you're just a mark. I'm not going in to back surgery in five, ten, fifteen years no. for your vision. Right. I'm going in for my vision. Right. It has to. We all have to. We all have to benefit from this. Right. And, and and the people see it. The people see it in your eyes. They see it in the way you carry yourself. They see it if, if they see that if, if you believe in it or not. Right. You know, and that's the difference between what they've seen from me this year versus any other time in my career. So how do you balance? Because I saw you uh, here and there over WrestleMania weekend. Mm-hmm. How do you balance that? Like how do you? Because because like you said, you know there is this thing that Cody and you have in common, which is your 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 family, whether it's his father or your wife. Um, how do you balance walking around? You know, because you have to support your wife that weekend, sure. Hall of Fame, you know, just being around the hotel and stuff. You're there with yeah. her. I saw you there with her. How do you still 
did you like that? Did you not like that? Were you able? Did you feel like you were able to maintain? No, I'm I'm here to support my wife, yeah. but I'm 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 was, Nick. This year, yeah, this year, this year, this year was easier. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, you know, it, that that there, there are. I think what's harder is the fact that you live your whole life in a fishbowl. You know, is it like you're, you know, you're you suddenly become any 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 minor issues and problems and stuff. It's like you you know you you want to be able to maintain your privacy with it, and and it becomes difficult when your circle of friends and you know your sort of typical support systems that exist, mm-hmm. you know, in any marriage and stuff are, are also then have a, have a, uh, professional repercussions, you know? So it becomes, it's a very high pressure in that respect because then you start thinking, Oh God, like, you know, I hope that this person doesn't hear about this and you know what I mean? And, and make this thing right, a, a big because deal. Everybody's because everybody's around. Yeah. 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 And, and you know, um, like, like, like in New Orleans, you know, like every now and then there'd be like someone who just, you know, doesn't get the hint and it's like, okay, time to leave us alone now, you know, and then I have to be bad cop and be like, you're, you're done. You know what I mean? Right. But there's always going to be But how much someone, of a bad cop can you be because you're a representative? Well, and there's always someone who's going to go like, oh, you know, she's great, but he's a dick, you know, whatever, <laughs> right? And, and it's like, and you have to, and, and it's like, that's, you know, at the end of the day, like I, you know, that, that I, I, that's what I signed up for. But um, as far as the other side of it. That, the people at that company have been very, very gracious to me, you know, um, and this year I felt a different sort of kind of um, reception, I think, you know, and obviously the fact that I've, half the guys who are now on top there I've worked with, right? you know what I mean? So Which it's is like a totally different situation yeah. and, and the sense that, like, I, I'm, I'm not walking in there like I felt like one of the guys. You know? Right. It's not enemy territory no, anymore. No, it's all that is, you know, that's, who cares? Silly. Yeah. yeah. And, and, what was what was actually encouraging and exciting was how many people in that company were coming up and being like, "Man, I really love what you're doing. Like, this, the ten pounds of God is so great." You know, like you know. Well, that's what I was gonna say. I, I feel like you going back this year. Not only was it because you've now got so many friends that are at the top of that card, but also because you're doing something that you're proud of. Yeah. Right. And sure. like, and that it's substantial. Like, I mean, it's, we're all in the genre. You know, there's only a certain amount of spots. For you know, available at any time in that company, and the rest of the time, it's up to you to you know make a splash in the genre however you can. Right, right. So, have you thought at all about? Because I, when I look at All In, I go, it's amazing. You know, I've been such a fan of what's going on with it. You know, s- since the beginning of it. But I also have talked about what is after this, mm-hmm. right? Like, how do you? It, it's it's great to have a giant show. Yeah, but like. This is about building momentum, and if you're going to build momentum, as you know, over the course of 10 years, you make these moves. If you're going to build that kind of momentum, it's about continuing to move forward, and I don't know if the answer is trying to get all these bodies together to build a super promotion that Mm -hmm. can run 10,000 seats multiple times a year. Right. I don't know if it's, you know, I, I, I don't know what it is, but do you those, have... Those conversations are happening, clearly, right. you know, and it's I would like, hope so. Yeah, and, and, and that's about as much as I know, you mm-hmm. know, because I'm, I'm part of that conversation mm-hmm. at times, because we're all, you know, we're all, we're all doing the same thing. We're all throwing things around and going, oh, is this the right way to go? Is this the right way to go? What's, incur- what's exciting is the fact that because there's a proven, uh, you know, re- you know a receptiveness you know, from the, from a, a, an audience, that's that's you know, one of those questions is already answered in the sense of like, well, we know that if we put this sort of core team together, there's going to be a market, you know, and that's that's the really exciting thing, and you know, the fact that somebody other than WWE is running Madison Square Garden, you know, I mean, there's, there's just insane. a lot of things that are just starting to move and shift and change, and 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 we're, but we're also very much still an island in that respect you know i'm Nick we're Aldis, the nwa that's what I I'm, I'm nick yeah. oldis you know I'm, I'm i'm very much loyal to billy and the nwa at the moment you know and uh but i still see myself as like i'm i'm my own entity i think that's part of the reason why the nwa title has got so much significance again is that because people feel like it could it could genuinely show up and be defended anywhere and i mean anywhere right no one thought it'd be defended at Ring of Honor a year ago. No, absolutely so, so, not. W- well, what's the what's the level up from that? Right, right, exactly. At that point, it's Who's like to say? we're not done. Why? Why not? Right? Why can't it happen? Yeah, I think it'd be amazing, especially when you look at what's going on in promotions now. I mean, even what WWE is doing, what they're doing in terms of who they're bringing into NXT sure. when they do things like uh, you know the Cruiserweight Classic or the Mae Young Classic, or they do these sort of 
one-off shows, what they're doing in the UK, where it's like, you know, Pete Dunne is the NXT UK champion, but at the same time, if you're in the UK, he's wrestling indie shows. Like, he's, mm-hmm. he, you'll see him at other shows. So, I mean, yeah. I, I think that the landscape is kind of open in a way that is totally unprecedented. They, they've become more secure in yeah. the sense that they... <laughs> No one's challenging them on market share, you know, and no one, no one's really trying to. Well, we all, we're all trying to, but not in the sense that no one's trying to put them out of business, and no one's trying to sort of challenge their, you know, no, no one's challenging their revenue streams on any significant level. We're mm-hmm. just trying to create our own and monetize the same audience that's there. So, and in the meantime, hopefully, build some of our own audience, you know, right. that we can monetize. But you know, the uh, what they're doing, what they've clearly started to understand is that they have a responsibility to the audience to put out the compelling content and if they don't do it somebody else will Mm -hmm. and if that compelling content involves like taking someone else who's not a lifer there or isn't locked down to wwe then they're they're clearly a bit more receptive to that idea yeah i mean it's my understanding that hunter has a has a replica of 10 pounds of gold on his office wall really so I haven't been to his office. That's what so I, I heard. Yeah. I don't know if it's true or not. That's, well, what, he's, that's he, what I keep being told. He loves history. That I can yeah. tell you. I mean, he loves wrestling history. Maybe, and then, Maybe he'd like a chance to get his hands on the real one. That's what you're putting out there in the universe, huh? Why I, not? I love it. Why not put that out there? I idolize that man. Yeah. What a great story. It'd be an amazing story. I mean, I mean look, on a very, very, very tiny level, even five years ago, ten years ago, the idea of... Me, one uh, being on WWE TV and sure. doing this interview with you, unheard of. Right. So I talked about that recently. I really? Said, think about this. Like, yeah. You know, this guy's able to have his own show where he's his own his own man, and he can discuss with whoever he wants about whatever he wants. And then, but they're also using him as you know to to as an analyst. I mean, it's a it's a microcosm, but it's, it's indicative, indicative of the attitude. Absolutely right? indicative of what's going on. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, oh man, I think that that would be amazing. And it's also kind of uh, nice to know that in your mind, in Dave's mind, in Billy's mind, in all of our minds, we haven't even scratched the surface on what this thing is capable of. And I'll tell you, the last person... See, this time I put it out there before you got a Yes, you did. I didn't even consider that. Like, I'm like, when you yeah, were like, I guess. Do you think you'll be all in? And I was like, good. <laughs> <laughs> Well, but I tell you this: I was going to sort of skirt around it and, like, you know, just a, just a, just a little tiny bit. Like, I'm good at the gamesmanship part of it, and then, but then you just went, "Do you think you'll be all in?" And I went, <laughs> <laughs> but if the ten pounds of gold shows up at a takeover, I'm taking credit for that one too. That okay. one's also mine. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think that the, I was going to say the last person who said who I talked to and was like, "Do you think you've hit your peak with what you're doing?" and said, "No, we haven't even scratched the surface," was. Carl Anderson, when he was in New Japan, Bullet Club. talking about the Bullet Club. Yeah. And at the time, I was like, eh, I think you've, you've scratched the surface. And he was right. He sure. was right. I mean, the, the, the idea of what that organization really is. and, and, and It's a brand. It's a you brand. Know, they've yeah. created a, 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 you know, he and, and Fergal, they, they, they created a, a multi-million dollar brand. Yeah. We all know what the Ballot Club is. Sure. You know what I mean? And that's that's... An offshoot yeah. of this thing, and that that's 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 the expansion that we're looking at. So the idea that that this vision for the NWA could shoot that far, and, and honestly, it's not that crazy. It's it's exciting. Well, because you know the one thing that we have with that you know with that with that championship belt and that asset is mm-hmm. the history. You can't you can't buy that. You know, you, you right? Can't, like, there's two two organizations. Well, three if you count the IWGP title, but there's really two. In 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 the in the Western Hemisphere, you know, there's there's two organizations, two brands that have that length. You know, one is WWE and one is the NWA. You know, and so and the fact that since the purchase of WCW, um, they've proven that there's you know there's such an affinity and such an affection for the late '80s NWA, especially you know that gave rise to and 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 really. I would say that if you look at the current WWE model or even the or even the WWE product of the last 10 20 years it's much closer to late 80s NWA than it was to late 80s WWF you know in the sense of like it was a, it's a much more athletic you know yes. it was about the the big you know the, these 
the, the rivalries and the, the making the title mean something and, and, you know, building to these, you know, long, hard fought matches where it was, you know, the outcome was very important. And we're, you know, we're essentially doing the same thing. It's just we're taking more of like an HBO approach maybe and being like, hey, you over there, do you, are you interested in working with us on promoting this title fight? You know, yeah. Because we can do it. We're, we're not married to anyone. And I actually think as much as it was not something that had been done before, and I think people didn't even really get it at first, you, the NWA not being a promotion, the NWA being an entity yeah. as opposed to a promotion, has, I think, strengthened you as a draw, has strengthened the championship as, you know, you guys have made it relevant like mm -hmm. it is a thing that but i would make i would see, but see I, I would make the argument that we still kind of are a promotion we're just not a promotion in what the wrestling interpretation of a promotion a wrestling promotion is a company that has a ring and has a, a tv show or has some sort of show and ha and, and goes and runs live events 50 and, guys and has yeah. merchandise and has the roster of but but boxing promotions aren't that you know golden boy promotions isn't that yeah. or you know Mayweather promotions or any they're not that they are just an entity that then have the rights to a, a certain product that people want to see and then they right. they work with with whoever else they need to work with to promote that fight yeah that is a promotion really yeah. you know that's the approach that we're taking in the sense of like we're a brand and we have a championship that people care about and in me you know hopefully they have you know they have one wrestler that you know that they're interested in and you know there will be more you know, over time. But for right now, you know, the, the, I'm the guy that they put their eggs in the basket, you know, and they said, this is going to be our guy and this, and, and you know, and he's the champion and the, cha you know, the, the championship is the asset and he is the asset, you know, and, and if, if they're together, then they're one and the same and they're a super asset. And that's what we use to, you know, to, to create interest in the brand. You better make sure you hold on to that title in September. I know. If you got all these delusions of grandeur, if you got all these visions De for what, sorry, delusions? I mean, uh, uh, Visions. Ideas. Yeah. Visions. Yeah. <laughs> All these visions. Yeah, you gotta make sure you hold on to this thing. Well, you know, look, I, I'm I'm under no illusion that there is you know, it's 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 a pick'em. And you know, Cody is you know, he's on the top of his game. Yeah. And I'd say I'm at the top of my game. So it's uh, I think like you said, there are we're we're in a we're in a sweet spot. We hit the sweet spot with this in that people are genuinely unsure. We're all unsure. Yes. None of us know. Yes. None of us know what's coming next. Are you you're you have an exclusive contract to the NWA, quote yeah. unquote? Yes. Yes. Does that I, at I'm all? A, yeah. I'm a, wait, I, I, yeah. Lightning One. Lightning One is the production Billy's production company. Okay. So the criticism that people have, and and they've talked about it with Ring of Honor. They've talked about it with a lot of of, of spots with independent promotions or. I guess promotions that aren't WWE, promotions that don't run four times a week mm -hmm. or whatever it is, that have exclusive contracts is that it doesn't give guys the reps, reps that yeah. they need. I mean, I, I think agree, in, and I agree with that. In your case, it's a little different because you've got that experience. No, it's, it's but, different in the sense that I am. Um, you are work wrestling. With, we work with, yeah, you know, we work with independent promotions, right? And you know, it's just that all that's really changed is that, I, like, I'm, I'm technically not really under an exclusive contract because you go everywhere lightning one well in the sense that it's not like uh you, it, it's it's a handshake right like and it's not like i'm it, it's not like a it's it's certainly not like a very controlling contract like i'm free to talk with anyone and discuss with anyone but i'm making it very well known that i'm loyal to the nwa and to lightning one however yes they pay me and uh, you know from so now when people want to book me for a, a, an event they go through the company you know that's that's the gotcha. so they're almost uh, in, again like a like a more like a boxing promotion right they're you know they're sort of like my management almost in, in that respect in that you know that they uh because yeah i mean like now my neck i i'm wrestling next next weekend i've got this weekend off it's the first weekend off i had in six or seven weeks but next week okay I'll so you're in, getting your reps in yeah and <laughs> yeah, i just got back from australia like you know and was, so um <clears throat> but uh, yeah, next weekend I'm wrestling Ken Anderson in Minneapolis. So. Right. Yeah, and I think when I saw you at WrestleMania, you were leaving to go to China. China yeah. yeah. How was China? So bizarre and so great. I mean, obviously that's a you know I, I like to make history. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I like being able to have things in my my uh, body of work that I can say I was the first. You know, I was the first British you know world champion of a major promotion. I was the f first global force champion. 
the first NWA champion to defend the title in China. You know, there's, it's very cool. Um, you know, and so, uh, it was, a, a, we, Colt and I worked very hard, you know, and with a, with an audience that were very sort of unfamiliar with the uh, product and, and their I was response. Ask about that, yeah. yeah, it was cool. Cause we, they, we, they responded quite similar to a Japanese crowd, but not, but they weren't as educated on it. So what was funny was we, we, we wrestled about 30 minutes. I mean, we put some time in out there and, you know, Colt is, Colt's very well schooled in the sort of, you know, British technical style. And, you know, obviously I know a bit of that. So we, we started with a lot of that and the people were really into it and they were like, and it was, and it was kind of fun and it was like gamesmanship because there was, we didn't have any feud going in. There was no, there was no rivalry or anything. It was, it was a, a title match. Um, and what was funny was, I guess, I, I hate to sort of divulge too much because I'm still kind of old school like that. But sure. but we took it in a way where it was probably more similar to something you would see in Japan where it started off very technical and very gamesmanshipy and then, you know, and then it started to get more aggressive and more aggressive. And once we once I turned that corner and got more aggressive with him, the audience were kind of, they didn't kind of like it. They were a bit like, ugh. Like, because they were having fun with it. Almost like we're not, this isn't a show anymore. These guys are getting mad at each other and that makes me uncomfortable. Yes. And it was very funny. It was very strange because it was kind of like, wow, like, you know, that's uncharted territory. Most of the time it's like they, but they're not, you know, most of the time it's more like they're not buying this, this fun stuff at the beginning and they want right. us to get into it. And that's kind of hard to maintain for 30 minutes. But for them to, they were loving the stuff at the beginning it was like exchanging holds and a bit kind of like you know anything you can do i can do better and stuff but then yeah we we started to sort of ramp up the heat a bit and they and and you could feel the difference and it was like so it was kind of a you like but that no not really yeah and this just because they um, weren't going on the ride with you well and also it's like i said before you know you're putting your body through stuff right and it's worth it worth it for the art it's worth it for the payoff it's worth it for the you know for the story but if, <laughs> if they're not enjoying it you're sort of thinking what am i doing <laughs> what yeah. am i killing myself <laughs> i like i i killed myself in that match i remember it took it, the ring was very hard too it was a big 20 foot like hard japanese ring and i we did i took a superplex and i remember like it, it was it, you know it was a perfect you know it was a sweet spot but it just it hit i hit hard you know it was a, a hard bump and i remember like sitting up from that and it just took all the wind out of me after wrestling for like 20 minutes and i and there were some of the some of the some of the boys were watching from the thing and they they all said we saw your face like when you sat up from that superplex and taking that bump they said like you looked like you just rather be anywhere else because i was just remember just going like oh like what? and i was one of those moments where i went what am i doing with my life like it's amazing <laughs> just so tired and just so beat up and then just like taking that well man i mean i love having these conversations with you i love uh watching your evolution the evolution of the product the evolution of the nwa of course all in is going down uh september 1st uh in chicago that's yes. i mean that's what's immediate and the future are you going to be is there? limitless or you can't you're you're you got to be careful I don't know. I might be there under uh, 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 under under a shroud, you know, <laughs> under a shroud of darkness. Maybe I'll sneak in there somewhere. I want to be there. It's going to be an amazing weekend yeah. uh, for wrestling fans everywhere. Thanks for hanging out again, man. Yeah, thanks for having me. Of course. Always.